Welcome to the Select Board of Monday, March 30th, 2020. Um, as a preliminary matter, I'm Diane M. Mahan, Select Board Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Mr. Dunn? Here. Mr. Kiro? Here. Mr. Hurd? Here. Mr. DeCourcy? Here. Staff, when I call your name, please also respond in the affirmative. Our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine? Here. Town Council, Attorney Hine? Here. And Ashley Maher with the Select Board Office, this is remote. Good evening. This is a meeting, open meeting of Arlington Select Board and it's, it's being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth given the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus and reduce risk of COVID-19 illness, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. Even if members of the public do not provide comment, participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. For this meeting, the select board is convening by Zoom is posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that you take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please also take care to adjust your screen or device name if you would like to speak. In order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes, it is helpful for participants to see your full first and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. For Nova's agenda supported meetings, all of the meetings for this all of the materials for this meeting, except any executive session materials, are available on the Nova's Agenda dashboard, and we recommend the members and the public follow the agenda as posted on Nova's unless I, the chair, notes otherwise. Now some meeting business ground rules. We're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they con conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. And if any members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself first. We will now go to agenda item two, update of on town of Arlington response to COVID-19 pandemic. Our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I'll be brief, but I did want to take this opportunity uh, to update the select board as well as those uh, joining the Zoom meeting or watching at home to give a brief update on the town's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I think the first thing I would say is the best source of um, information that we can provide is the daily notices that we're sending out via the town email uh, list, as well as posting the same information to the town website daily at 5 p.m. Uh, also, uh, every Friday, we are sending out an Arlington alert. That's the town-wide phone call trying to provide uh, what we deem at the end of the week, the most critical information or updates for people to be aware of. We're also updating our social media channels, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, so we're, we're trying to reach as broad an audience as possible. And then finally, in terms of communication, 
Uh, I've also been interviewing via Zoom with ACMI uh, once, maybe twice a week, and ACMI is making that available as well. So we're trying to push out information via as many channels as possible so that the residents of the town are as informed as possible about the actions that we're taking. Moving beyond that, I think the, most, uh, the second most important thing for me to say is a thank you to the town staff, specifically the staff at Health and Human Services that are truly working seven days a week around the clock in their response to this, uh, to this crisis. Uh, they're doing important work. Uh, they are the team that is informed as of the case count. And as many have probably read today, our case count rose to 19 positive cases in Arlington. Also, very sadly, we learned of the first death uh, of a resident of Arlington from COVID-19 today, a 68-year-old male. Uh, so not, not that anybody was not uh, considering this to be real or taking this seriously, but that certainly um, bring, brings it home and, and makes it much more real to many of us, certainly those who knew, um, knew the deceased as well as his family and loved ones. Um, moving on from there, uh, I think I want to just give an update on what the Board of Health staff is doing. Uh, on a daily basis, they're working with the state DPH, uh, working through a state database to identify people who are positive for COVID-19 in Arlington. From there, they begin what's called the process of contact tracing, working to determine who that person who's been found positive may have been in contact with as DPH defines a contact, which in general terms is being within six feet of someone who's been found positive for more than a 15 minute period of time. So they work to trace as many contacts as they can identify, reach out, communicate with those contacts, and then place them in quarantine. And this is all in an effort to break the line of transmission of the virus. So these are efforts that are ongoing and will be ongoing to try our best to contain the virus spreading in Arlington. Beyond that, it's our Board of Health staff that is advising us on the measures that we should be taking uh, as a general public uh, and as a population here in Arlington to try to stem or break the line of transmission or stem the, the spread of the virus in Arlington. So it's been our Board of Health staff that has advised us on uh, the closures that have been put in place. Uh, we're now operating under the governor's closure of all state schools until May 4th. We're operating under the governor's order of closing all non-essential businesses until April, 4, uh, April 7th, excuse me, as well as his stay at home advisory though today he mentioned that he would be likely making an announcement about an extension of that non-essential business closure, uh, closure as well as the stay-at-home advisory. So we'll, we'll be waiting tomorrow for what that announcement might, may be. Uh, however, it's our Board of Health that had been advising us all along to uh, close our playgrounds, close our basketball courts, our tennis courts, and continually issuing guidance to people uh, in the town to try to practice proper social distancing, staying six feet away from non-family contacts, so that, again, we can do everything we can to break the line of transmission. Uh, on a daily basis, members of the team, uh, myself included, are in contact with state officials, we're in contact with other local officials in the region, uh, and we're in contact with the regional hospitals to have an understanding of what they're facing and what we can be doing to help and communicate with them. And most of all, I, I wanna just reemphasize the message we've been putting in our uh, putting it in our uh, notices every day, as well as what has been included in the Arlington Alert uh, the past two weeks. And that is, if at all possible, uh, Arlington residents, please stay home. Uh, it's okay to go for a walk to get exercise. It's okay to go to the grocery store, to the pharmacy, or to help someone who's in need of help. But generally, if we all work together, staying home, avoiding contact with non-family contacts is the best work we can do to break the line of transmission. And this is, it's such an interesting, I would say, sociological study here that all of our efforts are being put towards the hope that nothing will happen. Uh, if we are successful in the efforts that we've put forth, it will mean that hospitals are not overwhelmed, less people um, come down with the virus in a short, at least in a short period of time, and, and, and less people die. And it's, it's odd, I think, for most of us to picture an outcome being something not happening, but that's what we're working towards. And right now, uh, the experts that have been advising us and advising state leaders are saying we're at least another week, maybe two weeks away from knowing whether or not our efforts have been successful. So we've, we've been in this for about two weeks. We're starting the third week. We need another full week or more to know if we've actually started to bend that curve down so that the hospitals will be able to treat uh, people that will inevitably contract COVID-19. So I wanna assure the board, I wanna assure the public, 
Uh, we're going to continue working on this every day. We're going to continue communicating with the public and the meet and the manners in which we have and even trying to expand that. Uh, there's a number of ways we're looking at trying to expand it. And we remain, uh, we remain ready to serve the town and, and get through this together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. Um, I agree. The, the best place to go for any information, ArlingtonMA.gov. I, I do want to thank our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine, for really, along with his department heads, Florida Health and others, really getting ahead of this. I know on uh, March 13th, when the governor had his first conference, and um, I, along with my colleagues separately, were talking with our town manager. Um, really didn't hear a lot coming out of the governor, but um, your town manager, Mr. Chaplain, was already ahead of this issue. Uh, first few days, some people thought maybe we were going a little, pushing a little too overboard, a little too alarmist. Um, but Arlington's really been safe and uh, uh, before the trend of what everybody else is doing. And um, it's really strange right now because we have to tell everyone, please stay apart so we can get back together sooner. Uh, I agree with the town manager in terms of the governor is stating from his experts that he hears the surge hitting anywhere from April 7th um, to April 17th, possibly the 21st. And um, I really hope I want to reiterate what the town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, has said through all of his efforts and all of our sacrifices. I really hope um, it's a teeny little bump or blip um, and we really um, don't see any catastrophic um numbers of Arlington residents or anybody um, as a result of the coronavirus. So with that, I will go to agenda item three. We have a discussion and vote postponement of the annual town election. A town council, attorney Hines. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to provide a brief update to the select board and the members of the public who are watching, listening and participating on Friday, the Board of Registrars, uh, along with um, Assistant Town Clerk Janice Weber, who I believe is on this uh, meeting with us, uh, had a meeting to discuss the Select Board's uh, position to postpone the election. Uh, there was a discussion of a number of items, but the sub and substance of that uh, meeting was that they concurred with the timeline. They did not express an explicit preference between the two dates that um, had been suggested by the board June 6th and June 13th. Um, there was a discussion about wanting to make sure that the election could take place before town meeting, which is consistent with what the board and the moderator had been discussing. There was some discussion of some very specific technical issues about the registrars themselves collecting votes. But the, again, the, the short of it is, is that they concurred with the general timeline that the board has outlined and um, voted to support either June 6th or June 13th as an appropriate time. If the board will indulge me for a moment, I wanna maybe head off a few questions um, given that the uh, chapter 45 of the acts of 2020 had just been passed uh, when we last discussed this uh, earlier that same day. And note for some folks in the public, some important features of the legislation that will help uh, to determine the overall timeline, why it's important for us to buy this time. So first and foremost, I wanna note that um, as the board adjusts the date of the election, voter registration will by law be adjusted as well. Folks will be able to register to vote up to 10 days before uh, whatever date this board sets. So 10 days before June 6th or 10 days before June 13th. Um, new ballots, um, can be printed, uh, but they have to be identical to the ballots that we had previously prepared. Absentee ballot um, voting has uh, essentially been greatly um, expanded in the sense that any person can uh, participate by absentee ballot voting uh, if they assert that health concerns due to COVID-19 are the reasons that they want to participate by an absentee ballot. Um, there's a technical box that has to be checked that's physical disability, but I think that the overall purpose of the legislation is to allow as many people as necessary to vote by absentee ballot. Um, also, anybody who already voted by absentee ballot, their votes count. Um, if they wanted to change their vote by voting in person, there is a mechanism for to, to do that, although it has to be before their absentee ballot was counted. Finally, 
The legislation also expands what's uh, called early voting by mail. Um, it allows for folks to uh, engage in early voting but only by uh, a remote means. It does not open up uh, early voting at the polls. In fact, it specifically says that there will not be early voting um, physically at poll locations. But uh, between that and the uh, expansion or the relaxation of absentee ballot standards, a lot of folks who would have heightened concerns about their health and participating even in a uh, June election could avail themselves of either absentee or early voting by mail. Um, with that, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I don't know if the assistant town clerk has any further observations about the Board of Registrar's meeting, but again, they're supportive of the timeline that this, this board um, originally contemplated. Um, okay, uh, thank you, Attorney Heim. Uh, what I'll do is before I call on my colleague, um, since it was referenced and we um, need to hear about the Board of Registrar's as well as the town clerk's office, I'll call on the assistant town clerk, Mrs. Weaver. Thank you, Diane. Um, Doug, I was unaware of anything about early voting uh, for the town, for the town election. So I, I don't think that's on the table. We have no early voting ballots and we weren't um, notified of that. Okay, well, that's something that we'll certainly have to discuss. But again, in, in, in sum and substance, the absentee ballot process is going to be very, very similar. If folks have an acute, or, or actually if folks just say that they have a COVID-19 uh, health-related concern about voting at the polling locations, they'll be able to access absentee ballots. Obviously, um, we only have so many absentee ballots, and the, I know that the town clerk's office has been working hard on these issues already, um, and we'll have to access more. I believe that's correct, right, Janice? Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Kiro? Yes, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm going for the unmute and I'm trying to read the statute in the same window. Um, actually, to, to, to uh, Ms. Weber's question, um, I wonder if town council could clarify. When I was looking through the statute, um, it looked like it said that absentee ballots could be mailed out as the early voting ballot and that um, individuals were not required to um, actually submit um, the application even for the for the early voting ballot that any form of written communication my understanding of that was that uh, even an email with the appropriate information would suffice is my understanding of that correct uh, through you madam chair to the town council attorney Hein. Uh, that's correct uh, the th there's basically an additional early voting um, sort of vehicle that was a sort of modified early voting that was inserted in the legislation um, there might be some things that we sort of need to figure out as to exactly how that how that works and how it's distinct from the absentee process. But yes, it does say that you can um, file a request with the clerk's office to vote early by email. Um, there may need to be some follow up discussions with the clerk's office about how exactly that would that operates. And as I said previously, all the ballots essentially have to be identical, um, even to the ballots that as much as practically possible um, to the ballots that we had previously developed. Got it, thank you, thank you. Uh, Ma Madam Chair, is this an appropriate time to make a, um, well, I have a couple more comments and then, then I, I, I wonder if it's an appropriate time to make a motion. Yes, please. Okay, so the, the, the um, additional comments I wanted to make around this, this is a very unusual election. And um, even in talking to some folks in the community, um, there was confusion. Uh, there were some folks who thought that this was an exclusively early voting um, uh, election um, th th that was going to be taking place. Um, and I tried to explain that it's it's actually a hybrid, that the polls will be open, but the early voting option for this election only by mail uh, will, will be available. And that does, um, I think raised the, the the challenge. I think for all of us to to uh, engage in a really vigorous uh, public information campaign. Um, I, I know I saw that we received a letter just as we were coming into the meeting from a um, a group of town meeting candidates who uh, asked for our assistance in making sure that that folks are aware of the change date of the election, the fact that um, 
uh, early voting ballots will be available. Um, they suggested billboards at major intersections, and I defer to the town manager on whether a couple of those might be possible. I would think particularly near grocery stores because that's just about the only place people have to go right now. Mm -hmm. um, there were three other suggestions. Uh, one was to recruit the assistance of ACMI, holding a series of virtual debates among the candidates for town town-wide office, which of course there were no debates, and I know ACMI is hearing, we don't control that, but I know Jeff, you're listening. Uh, one was to put out a, a mailer to registered voters alerting them the availability of unrestricted, um, well, it says absentee ballots, but the early voting process. I don't know what the feasibility of that is, but I'd, I'd like to recommend, it, it, um, and, and I'm sure it will be incorporated in all of the extensive uh, outreach that the town manager has been doing in conjunction with the, the COVID-19 crisis that, that this specifically will be uh, put front and center, especially the early voting piece, it's so new for everyone. Um, the last thing that was requested in this letter, uh, I think is probably a little bit more problematic because it, it asks to pursue options for mailing statements from all candidates running for townwide office so voters can make informed decisions uh, from the safety of their homes. I mean, that seems to be that's bordering on the, the using uh, public resources, I think, for campaigning. I'm not sure if it's equal opportunity. I Maybe mean, it's a public information piece, but it's, it seems to mirror a, a lot of what the league already does. And it may be worth just, just reaching out to the league and see if they have any I, intention of bolstering uh, their efforts. I think they'd already sent out their uh, candidate profiles and maybe they're looking to bolster that. So it's something I, I hope we'll just think about as we get closer to this, um, using some of the, the outreach mechanisms we've used for the public, um, the public health outreach um, that, that will also incorporate some repeated messaging about the fact that we have changed the date of the election. You don't have to, if you don't feel safe, you do not have to come to the polls, but you can uh, request um, an early, um, early voting uh, uh, ballot, and this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the comment part. Um, as far as the motion, um, I, I would like to uh, move that we set the date of the uh, municipal town election for Saturday, June 6th, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The motion by Mr. Kiro set the date of the municipal elections to Saturday, June 6, 2020, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Is there a second, Mr. Hurd? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. Um, I do want to uh, call on my colleagues, um, and I'll actually do that first. I just want to check with Mr. Kiro if um, that was your complete mm -hmm. discussion for now. Um, yeah, that was my motion. I think we received, we all saw the correspondence from Ms. Kramer regarding availability of the town hall. And I think that um, uh, when we discussed this last week, my, my initial preference was June 6th as well, because it keys off of the date that the legislature set for um, special elections in a couple of, um, I, I think I think it's Senate districts. Um, so we're, we're, we'd go the Saturday after, after those. So it seems to make sense. Ma Thank Madam you. Chair, Jan Janice, is, uh, Janice would like to, um, either ask a question or give some input. Yes, I would. Weaver, one a second time. Yes, I'd just like to um, state my concern about this early voting because that's a whole different ballot altogether and we were never apprised of the fact that we might have early voting. And absentee ballot voting is basically the same in this situation because of the coronavirus. And if we go to early voting, that's just a whole different thing. It's and it, that means we sort of have to set up another um, way to do that. And I think it would be, well, I think it would be too hard to get everything ready for that. I can do it, but we were never apprised of that. We were told that we were not having early voting for the town election. And actually the absentee ballot serves the same, the same thing. So I don't see the necessity of confusing right. with early voting. I can leave that um, to Attorney Heim in terms of um, the interpretation that we got from the legislation out of the State House. And I believe I saw something, um, I believe it came from you, from the town clerk's organization that spoke about um, absentee ballot and, and then they called it mail in voting. Um, and then they spoke to um, early voting. So, what we can do is 
Um, I've had conversations with our the select board office, and um, I, I'll leave it to Attorney Heim along with meeting with um, Mrs. Weaver and others. Um, we're going to do everything um, that we need to do under the law as well as try to take it a, another step forward like we always do. So um, on uh, so that's still to, to be determined exactly what, what the election will look like. I think, um, as my colleague, Mr. Carroll, stated, uh, from, from what I've read from what came out of the State House, um, there, it, it does include um, mail in, and then it does include early voting. So we need to have further discussions on that. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Hurt, did you have any further comments? I'm sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to to concur with the date. I think the June 6th date is gives us, based on where we're looking to start town meeting and give us a little time between the election and town meeting so people that are elected can prepare. I think the June 6th date is the preferable date. Um, and just as far, I think, you know, as we talk about early voting versus absentee ballot, residents just want to be sure that they can get a ballot sent to them. And if we just call it absentee ballot, that's fine. We just have to make sure that we can get our hands on as many as the state will provide us to make sure we can, because there's certainly going to be a lot of demand for the absentee ballots in this election. Um, and so we, we want to be prepared for that. And people will and just simplify the process. And I think as Attorney Heim mentioned, if we can make it so people don't have to go into the clerk's office, they can just email the information to have the absentee ballot sent to them, then they can send it back in. I think that satisfies what people are looking for. And we don't have to get too much into the weeds about absentee ballot versus early voting if we can do it through the absentee ballot system. That's it for me. Mr. DeCorsi? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I also agree with the June 6th uh, date and, and for reasons Mr. Hurd said, uh, having to do with, um, it still gives us a chance to, to get into town meeting um, later in June. Um, and I do think, you know, for purposes of tonight's vote, it's, it's, it's really to select June 6th as the date. And, and there, it sounds like there still needs to be some more discussion on logistics. And I think, you know, as long as we're clear and, and we can, have those discussions sooner rather than later. We can keep the public updated so that people have enough time to, to make their decisions as to how they're going to vote. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, June 6th uh, sounds good to me. Uh, I very much agree with uh, the way um, Mr. DeCourcy expressed it, which is that, uh, you know, we're setting the date tonight and there's still a lot of logistics of that to work out. And uh, I absolutely, uh, and I, I, I know, I, I absolutely encourage uh, the clerk's office and the select board office and the town manager's office to make it as easy as possible for people to vote. Uh, this has been a longstanding, you know, position of mine, and I'm, you know, happy to keep banging the drum on it in this uh, unfortunate situation. Uh, and uh, in terms of the the letter we got from some of the, the candidates uh, just before the meeting started. Um, I think I, I'm in favor of most of the stuff in there. I just think, uh, but I also think that we should continue to, um, it, it's all about the public and private partnerships in there. And I mean that in terms of like ACMI and the League of Women Voters and things like that. It's not, uh, this one isn't just on the town. It's you know, doing notification about things like elections requires a lot of people to work together through a lot of channels. And I think that uh, we should absolutely uh, do a lot to do that, to work those partnerships to get that uh, publicity to happen. Um, and my final thought is just repeat something that I said last week, which is uh, I recognize full well that taking this vote is extending my term, which is really um, unorthodox, but I've thought about it a lot and I do think it is the right thing to do. And um, I will, you know, I'm, I'm going to be serving a couple months longer than I thought I would. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Um, and um, I agree in terms of, the, um, I know I and others, and I've had extensive conversations recently as today with uh, Mrs. Kropelka and Fran Reedy um, in the select board office, because this isn't the first time when we've had to have um, early voting. I'm already thinking about the logistics, also discussing with the town manager, Adam Chapterlane, but I don't want to go into specifics yet. 
until we know exactly what what kind of pie we're baking here, what needs to be done. But um, everything certainly is doable in terms of what I think um, and my colleagues do in, in terms of the interpretation of uh, the vote, this vote moving forward. And I would, before I uh, call for the motion, um, I also would, um, as you know, I'm up for re-election. Uh, you, you can also find online with the Arlington Advocate. Uh, there were questions, five questions answered once a week. YourArlington.com also has um, four or five questions, as well as the ACMI um, did uh, tape from the townwide candidate, uh, candidate profile. You can go on ACMI. Each candidate had up to five minutes. Go on to the on-demand government channel feature. Uh, go to ACMI.tv, and you can find exactly how to get there when all, all, all of that is running and rerunning and rerunning. <laughs> um, and certainly, um, I'll leave it to Mr. Chatelaine in terms of the points that my colleagues um, outlined that were raised in terms of what's appropriate. I certainly want to get the word out, as, as we all do, every way we possibly legally can, because this really is um, uncharted territory on that. So with that, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd, to set the date of the municipal elections for Saturday, June 6, 2020, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, roll call, Attorney Hine. Doug, you're Sorry about that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Kuro? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahon? Yes. So that's a unanimous vote, five to zero. Thank you. Uh, we now go to correspondence with Steve. We have two requesting select board to accelerate public road projects. Joseph Wise via our request answer center. I apologize if I said your name incorrectly. And dangerous intersection at Wachusett Avenue and Appleton Street from Mark Lepper of Wachusett Avenue. Mr. DeCourcy. Steve, you're muted. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I move receipt of both letters and I did, wanted to speak briefly to the dangerous intersection letter um, and, and perhaps move that that be referred to TAC um, for further review. But um, that, that intersection, it's, those of you who are up in the Dallin School area know that it is a, a dangerous intersection. And I actually went to the Dallin School. I was a safety patrol at the Dallin School and that was my intersection. So I know it very well. I, that there is a stop sign there on Appleton Street going westbound into the intersection that wasn't years ago. And that's the issue that's being raised through this letter. So perhaps there is a way to, to see if there's either more signage that can be done or, or, or just to study it and, and, and get back to us on that. Um, is there a second to move receipt, correspondence received, Mr. Dunn? Second. Okay. Um, Mr. Hurd? I, 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 you, I won't come. I was just going to say, as far as that stop sign, just it might be just an aspect of painting it. So I don't know if we want to send it to the town manager before sending it to TAC just to see if that is a more viable option. If the problem is making a stop sign more visible, what it didn't sound that he was trying to change the traffic laws other than just getting people to stop at the stop sign. There might be something we could do in a quicker manner, but I'll defer to we'll the, the board. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Hurd. The, the email that I received, um, there were a couple things in there, request for a speed bump, um, as well as, um, I think he said something about a yellow Marvin. So I think that's where the TAC would come in. So um, we'll take the motion to move receipt. Um, I'm sure the town manager will take the pass at the part of it that's applicable to him and then um, after that um, any of those other points if possible um, go on to the transportation advisory committee but recognizing the times that we're in right now um, and some things that we were able to get done um, much sooner have to sort of be put on sort of the slow track um, not not that anything's going to stop and not happen so um, 
but I think that's what we'll do. If that's okay, Mr. Chaperlain? Yes, I mean, I, I guess the, the board could certainly refer to TAC. We could refer to the senior transportation planner who works closely with TAC. Um, but whatever the board's prerogative is, we'll, we'll get, you know, get to the same place. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy, is that, is that amenable? Yeah, that's fine. Actually, I'll defer to the town manager on that. If you would prefer that we um, send it to the senior transportation planner first, that's fine with me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Motion to move receipt by Mr. DeCourcy, second by Mr. Dunn. Roll call. Attorney Hines? Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Curl? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Move receipt 5 0. We now go to new business. Uh, Attorney Hine? No new business. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. I want to thank Attorney Hine. I'm very grateful for everybody for everything. Um, but he certainly has uh, helped me in terms of having a virtual select board meeting as well as writing up preambles for me and the like. Um, and he, along with the town manager, Diane, can I ask a question? Are you going to allow any questions? Um, there's no citizens open forum. And well, we didn't so have it last week either, but you allowed questions before votes were taken. I know, but we, we need to get, that's because everything was brand new and we were discussing um, options. This is pretty straightforward. I'm trying to maintain um, a select board meeting. Do you have questions that that's 30 seconds or less? Who are, I'm not sure who I'm talking to. Uh, this is Jordan Weinstein. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not sure, if, uh, to be honest with you, this is taking me a bit by surprise because I, I was prepared to basically follow, and many of us have questions. We have about 70 or 80 people. No, you have 50 people on, uh, watching this right now. Um, I know, but this... Uh, and many of us have board. questions that we're, we thought that we were going to be following the same format as last week. Uh, there's a lot discussed this evening about uh, early voting versus absentee voting, and, and there are quite a few questions. For example, why wasn't a later date considered for, given that all the candidates can't do the typical campaigning and need as much time as possible to uh, make themselves uh, recognized and get name recognition and get themselves before the voters. Why was June 6th chosen when All right, I'll, 30th I'll definitely was chosen? Address this question, but I just want to remind everybody that, that these are unusual circumstances. This is a select board meeting, um, and I know you and others have attended select board meetings. Um, unless it's citizens open forum, unless it's an agenda item that um, a proponent or it's a public hearing, um, we do not have public comment and, and conversation back and forth on every single uh, select board. Well, you didn't have any comment or conversation at all, Diane. I know, and maybe I'm kind of, you know, living with that. I was trying to, you know, considering that we were having a first meeting, and we, this is a brand new discussion about setting elections and about town meeting. So I had to allow some latitude there, and I, I don't want to go back and forth because we, what we're basically doing here is following under state law. We need to schedule the election before June 30th of 2020. We set a date. Um, I think perhaps we're being a bit ambitious with that. I think we need to wait out to see. Circumstances could change that um, we could be revisiting this issue again, but I don't have a crystal ball in terms of uh, what the coronavirus and its course is going to look like. So, um, a new business, uh, Mr. Chaperlain? Uh, no new business, thank you. Um, new business, Mr. Hurd? I just want to thank all the department heads in the town that have been working so hard to keep us safe, and particularly the town manager. And then just say a big thank you to any Arlington residents that work in the medical field. I know people in the medical field are really straining themselves and going above and beyond whatever the call of duty that they ever thought that they would have to work and uh so just thank you to all arlington residents that are helping others out there thank you mr carroll no business yeah thank you i echo uh, uh mr hertz uh thanks to the to the staff i also want to thank you know a number of um <clears throat> arlington uh volunteers and community residents have been trying to really organize around helping 
uh, others within within the community. Uh, there's a mutual aid Arlington uh, organization that I know has spun up mutual aid Arlington dot org. They're looking for volunteers to work on a very hyper local <coughs> basis within their neighborhoods just to make sure there are no uh, neighbors um, in need um, and uh, and also to help uh, fight um, uh, social isolation. I also saw that uh, we had a, an announcement came out of the planning department facilitating um, community, uh, the possibility for community activists to work together on um, the amazing Arlington a, a initiative to um, to uh, allow residents to, to come up with ideas and work within their areas as well around fighting social isolation. And frankly, that might actually be one way also to make sure that some of the important information around the public health emergency and um, you know the the election and, and such reaches uh, those who um, may not be plugged into our existing uh, communication channels. That's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Uh, new business, Mr. Dunn. I'll echo my thanks for public safety, health, and town employees. It's tough times, and we appreciate what they're doing. Thank you. Um, new business, Mr. DeCorsi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I want to echo the, the statements of my colleagues. Also recognize that today is actually National Doctors' Day, and um, on top of, of our town workers, our first responders, I, I do want to thank our doctors and all, all healthcare professionals for, for all the work that they're doing, and, and just want to encourage everybody over the next few weeks, you've heard from the governor, you've heard from the town manager, how critical these next few weeks are, so really important for us to work together by staying apart. Thank you. Um, and before um, I announce, well, I'll announce the next meeting, April 27, 2020. Before I take a motion to adjourn, I just want to again emphasize, please go to arlingtonma.gov. Uh, Mr. Chaplain. I do have one one more question, if you have the time for it. I thought, excuse me, Jordan. I I thought that uh, I thought we were meeting next week on the sixth, uh, Madam Chair. Um, we had a meeting scheduled for the 6th, and right now there's not anything before us. Um, if it's for some reason, we still have the meeting on the 6th if you want, but right now I don't have anything on the agenda for it. We do have one time-sensitive PDBG-related warrant article hearing, but I, I suppose, why don't we, we can, we can talk about that this week, and if the meeting's necessary, yeah. we can, uh, we can, we need we can it. advertise it as necessary. <laughs> Okay. Excuse me, Chairman Mahan, I also have a quick question, Elizabeth Dre. Uh, we're at the end of the meeting now. I'm sorry that I, I really can't stray from the format. So um, I'm just looking for edu education as to what, what are the rules, because I'm just, where can I look to find the rules about participation just out of respect? I just don't know what they are. Okay, if you go to, um, uh, would it be the special state? No, it would be. Attorney Hine, I don't know if it's Chapter 45 of the Act of 2020. Um, could you, am I citing that correctly? Can you explain to us how to sign up for, for citizens? Okay. All right, all right, all right. This is all right. Madam um, Chair, do you want me to speak briefly to this? Yes, if you could, and then I need to take a motion to adjourn after I do my new business. Thank you, Attorney Hine. Thank you, folks. I think there's two separate lines of things that folks are a little bit confused about. One is if we don't have Citizens Open Forum on the agenda, we don't have a Citizens Open Forum. Public participation is not generally something that happens unless it's a hearing or it's via Citizens Open Forum. Obviously, last week there was a lot of discussion and the chair opened for public uh, comment on the initial discussion to set the date of a postponed, uh, to take a vote to postpone the town election. Having chosen a couple of dates to run by the Board of Registrars, the Board of Registrars had a vote, um, and they recommended that same panel. So in terms of tonight's meeting, the rules are generally set forth in places like the Open Meeting Law, the Select Board's Handbook, things like that. With respect to voting, I think the thing that I want folks to come away from this understanding is that there will be opportunities to vote by mail. And whether you call those early voting or you call them absentee voting, there's gonna be opportunities for folks to mail by, uh, vote by mail-in ballot. Um, and the clerk's office, I'm sure, will be publishing some information. I'll make sure to work with them. I know the town manager will be concerned about it too. Make sure that folks understand 
what are kind of distinctions without a difference in terms of early voting versus absentee ballots. They're going to be the same ballots one way or the other. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, and um, with that, just uh, to follow form, our regular, next regularly scheduled meeting is April 6, 2020. I will um, have conversations with the town manager and others. And um, if we do have something on the agenda, we will be meeting on April 6. If not, I'll give the appropriate notice to my colleagues. With that, I'll take a will motion to adjourn. Will there be public forum at the next the, meeting on April 6? Um, motion to adjourn by Mr. DeCourcy. So moved. Uh, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Second. A roll call, Attorney Heim. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Curro. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Mahon. Yes. Thank you and good night.